Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14 says, Here is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commandments. For this is the entire duty of man. For God will judge us for everything we do, including every hidden thing, good or bad. Yes. Good or bad, yes. God will judge us for everything, which includes, as the scripture declares, every hidden thing. Now, private thoughts and private struggles, before we touch on the scripture, is really a deep inner personal world that has its own conversations and its own way of thinking, which, if left unchecked, can oftentimes leave us feeling guilty, shameful, Sometimes even content, sometimes unsettled, sometimes determined, and sometimes even beaten. And furthermore, it can cause distance with others. Your personal world can drive you away from those very close to you, those who love you, those who care about you, those who appreciate you. That even with all the idiosyncrasies, they have that love for you. Now, I know about that kind of love because I have that love at home. I have a wife who I've been married to for 24 years. Who, with all of my idiosyncrasies and all of my mistakes and bad choices, still loves me. However, I'm was in danger of causing distance between us because of the hidden world within my soul, my heart, my thinking, my body. And for many of us, we can be in a very stable relationship but still be distant from your partner simply because of those hidden things, those hidden things of shame and guilt those hidden things that perhaps you don't want to bring to the service because you don't know what the response is going to be. And we need to be mindful about these things because I went through life keeping a lot of stuff from my wife and keeping a lot of stuff from my family and hiding things because I was ashamed of those things. Because I wasn't sure what kind of response I would get if I was to communicate exactly what was going on with me. And for many people, whether they're in relationships or whether they are children or whatever, they, whatever the case may be, you will find that the hidden secrets of the heart is the major cause of problems in many families. And not only that, but it destroys friendships. Friendships that you probably would have had from boyhood. It destroys those things. So, <coughs> excuse me, those hidden worlds, they're not the, it's not the best thing to do to hide things. It's not the best thing to do to try to keep things and think that you are in control of those things. So I want you to be mindful about that as we go through today's and we go through the different sessions because God is in the business of cleaning up every stain. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Others may distance themselves from you. Others may walk away from you. But God, hallelujah, in his infinite love, he would never do that. Praise be to God. So our personal world, if left unchecked, can cause us to develop what I would call behavioral patterns that not only may cause a problem to us uh, in our everyday lives, but could also cause problems to others. Do you know that sometimes when you respond in a particular way, do you ever question yourselves why? I mean, how many of you have really 
lost your temper, really got really crazy and couldn't understand why you lost your temper. You were having a discussion about something and suddenly you exploded. How many of you have done that? Come on, let's be real. And then you think to yourself, why did I do that? Because it's the hidden secrets, it's the hidden things that are buried deep in the recesses of our heart that, that, that we, we've never dealt with. And sometimes all it takes is a trigger point. That's all it takes. You and I could be walking down the road having a great conversation and having a good laugh and then something could be said and suddenly you can explode and you don't know why. It's because of those hidden things. Most men, and I would say most, are extremely uncomfortable talking about or sharing their private thoughts or struggles. But these private thoughts, and I want us to understand this, and struggles, they need to be identified, they need to be translated, and they need to be dealt with. They must be dealt with. I want to say this to you, and, and, I, and, I, and I'm saying this, and I'm being honest with you. The distance that I had with God was my fault. I had distance with God because I wasn't prepared to, to recognize that I had a problem in my life. So I pushed myself further from God, I pushed myself further from my wife, I pushed myself further from my family, and I distanced myself. But the moment I came to a place of acceptance, and the moment I began to deal with those things that was going on in my inner personal world, the closer I came to God, and the more closer I came to my spouse. Think about this very, very seriously, my brothers. Today, this is a very, very serious issue. Relationships are destroyed. Families are broken up. Friendships are destroyed. Feuds are caused because of the hidden things of the heart. But God wants us to live better than that. And God's desire is that we, are, we recognize that, one, we are made in his image and likeness, and two, we have his character breathed on the inside of us. But we're not operating in that way because we haven't grabbed a hold of that yet. Because we think that everything we do is right. But here's another scripture. Romans 2, 16. And this is taken from the Living Bible Version. <coughs> The day will surely come when at God's command, Jesus Christ will judge the secret lies of everyone, their innermost thoughts and motives. This is all part of God's great plan, which I proclaim. Now look how serious that verse of scripture is. The day will surely come when at God's command, Jesus Christ will judge what? First and foremost. Secret lies of everyone. So why are we so barefaced to lie to God and scripture tells us that we will be judged for it. So it's better to, to, to actually uh, walk, walk and live in God's commandment, follow his word, follow his principle, bring your thought life in line with his thoughts so that you won't be judged in that way. Their innermost thoughts and motives. So we keep things because we have hidden motives. It's like a young man who wants to have sex with a girl, isn't it? And he tells her that he loves her. He sweets her up, takes her out, wines and dines her, oh baby. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You know where I'm, you know where I'm at here now. What's his motive? His motive is to have sex. His motive is to put another notch on his belt. That's his motive. But those motives will be judged. Those thoughts will be judged. Those secret lies will be judged. So we need to be mindful of that. I mean, this, when I read this, I had to read it again. I, I, had to, I had to do a double blink. Because I realized that actually all through my life, I had hidden secrets. I had hidden junk. And the reason why I had certain behavioral problems 
was because of those hidden things. But once I recognised what they were, what was I going to do about them? That's the hardest thing. Who do I talk to? Who do I share them with? How can I bring these things? I come up to say, Dr. Christopher and say, Dr. Christopher, I'm going through this. But God is your first port of call. And I'm talking to Christian men here. Right? God is your first port of call. Because he will bring you a people that will support you. That will encourage you. That will enable you to be able to deal with those issues. And I'm going to share a little story about that in a moment. All of us as men will have to stand before God. Every single one of us. And be judged for what we have done in this life. Whether good or whether bad. So I challenge us. Let's start looking at how we can get close to our God. So that we can reveal all the secret lies. Reveal all those thoughts and motives that we have kept hidden for so long. Come on. Whether we're ministers or leaders or teachers or pastors or whatever we are, come on. It doesn't matter. The position is not the issue. The issue is, how can I live as a man in this world and do what I need to do to please God in every way? That's the issue. And it can be done. And it must be done. Because if this world is going to change, we need to change first. And I believe that when a man changes, the world will change also. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe that when a man knows who he truly is in God, this world will be turned upside down greater than you can ever imagine. I believe that. But you can see when you look around you, we want to encourage our men. We want our men to be fighting fit for the kingdom. But the devil has other plans. And I want to say that the devil doesn't like any man. Because every male that is born is a potential threat to him. Do you know that everything that happens in this life is geared towards destroying the man? That's true. That's right. Correct. I don't think you realize that. Everything that happens in life is geared for the destruction of man. Yes, sir. Rebellious children, disruptions in the families, issues at school, work and play, you name it. It is there to destroy man, the seed carrier. Because if there's no seed, there's no plant. There's no copy. There's no replica. So bear that in mind when you understand when stuff goes on in your life and you're kind of trying to think, what's going on here? All the enemy is trying to do is to cause you to doubt who you are. But God has other plans. We will not be able to use life's ideas and struggles and inconsistencies or challenges as an excuse for failing to live right. Think about that for a moment. You will not be able to use life's ideas, struggles, inconsistencies or challenges as an excuse for failing to live right. 